Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is for you. I'm Cyclone. It's time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic, and let's do the final scenario today. This is the uh, 6E05-1650 Stanlow LPG to Humber Oil Refinery. That is the service we're doing today. It is a 75-minute journey according to the uh, duration information. Uh, pretty basic wet autumn day. I don't know if autumnal is a word, but it's not a word I use very often, but I will not judge people who invented English, so I won't uh, judge that at all. Uh, we're taking 6005 over the Pennines to Leeds on this wet fall day. Um, yep, so that, nothing much, much to really talk about there. Let's just go ahead and get in the scenario and see what this entails today. Good evening, driver. Today you'll be taking this freight service from here at Manchester, Victoria, as far as Leeds, where another driver will take over from you. You may depart signal allowing for leads when you are ready. Remember, our maximum principal speed is 60 miles per hour. And this is probably very strictly enforced. Let's not, let's not test that and find out. We're going to move the reverse to forward. We're going to get the brakes off to a minimal reduction, which isn't enough to keep us from powering through it. Note to self, remember to take it off. Uh, headlights are on. Instrument lights are on. Wipers will be needed, but we're not seeing rain yet. But as soon as I go outside the cab and go into this kind of view, you're going to see when I come over to here and come back to the cab, all of a sudden there's water on the windshield. So it's obvious that it's raining. We are going to need to have these going as we drive today. So what are we waiting for before we get going? Ah, uh, well, the guy up here is who we're waiting for. Here he is. That's who we're waiting for right there. The Shaw and Crompton, Manchester, Victoria. That is our service to Manchester, Victoria. 2J75 is who we're waiting for. And you can see him coming in right now on our cab view. So, let's take a quick look at the train that we are driving today. We're driving a Class 45. We're going to go ahead and zoom in on a little bit. And uh, let's turn that little thing off by changing the headlights one more level. And that is our train. So, let's take a shot of our train. There we go. Thumbnail acquired. Let's go, shall we? Not yet, we can't. Let's also reset our view to the front. So here we go. Let's uh, zoom that back out a little bit. And we're going to get ready to go now. So HUD back on. Minimal reduction can be removed. Which I should have done first. But unlike the Class 158, you can run the brakes through the uh, engine on this train. 25 is our limit as we approach the um, junction here. If you want to know that other train was, let's go to the back of the train for a second, I'll show you. The other train that's just coming through right now is 2M81 heading to Liverpool Lime Street from Wakefield Westgate. You can also see that I've idled my throttle or move my throttle to an idle setting because I was approaching 25. I'm now going to go ahead and put the power back up to about 450 RPM, it looks like. It does take the engine a while to kick in here, so if you need speed, you have to plan for the uh, delay on the engine. But we're now going to start moving our speed up to 30 miles per hour. And that increase is happening a little too quickly, so I'm going to move it back to 375 for a moment. By the way, there is a shunt setting on this as well, so you can go very slowly if you happen to be working in a yard. So the shunt setting is uh, something I'll show you when I go to aisle of the throttle again. And move it up to 500 RPM. We should be able to increase now to 40 miles per hour. No, however, there is a 30 up ahead, so I'm not gonna try too much to worry about the 50 mile per hour segment. I'm gonna go ahead and just try to stay at the uh, 40 mile per hour limit and not exceed that. I might, I might not even reach uh, 40 to be honest with you. Uh, let's review our itinerary. That's easy. Just stop there. Okay, that's that. No timing. So uh, you notice that we have a thousand points already on our uh, score. So we start with the perfect score. This is one of those you get penalized for reductions. You ain't getting any more points. So uh, your challenge is to maintain those points to the end of the scenario. Now the alternative way to do it is to set a timing on the stop and give a thousand points for the stop. But uh, if you're going to do something like that where you only have one objective, why? Just give them the points and penalize for them instead. So that's what they're doing. 
I probably could increase the RPM to get a really, really good uh, charge. I'm going up to 750 RPM, but because I'm entering the 30, I'm going to just show you there is a shunt setting right here. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to keep it at 400 RPM and see if we can get the uh, speed to idle off a little. And it looks like it is. So once it gets a little lower, I'll move the RPM back up to maintain. Which I can start doing now. Now speedboard up ahead, I believe, is a 60 mile per hour speedboard, if my memory serves me correctly, and uh, sometimes it does. My speed is holding at 30 and it's starting to increase, so I'm going to put the RPM to 425. I'm gaining too much. Let's uh, back it off again. Gaining too much. We're now on a 1 in 117 uphill gradient. I am gaining speed again, so back to 350 RPM, and I'm still gaining, so I'm going to idle the throttle. I'm going to move it back to a shunt setting for now because I should not be gaining too much speed on the shunt setting. I'm going to move it back to 350 now that I've dropped a little bit of speed. I'm going to see how this 350 and higher settings affect me. Remember, this is based on the Virgin Trains model. Not perfect, but considered one of the better models in terms of how it operates in train simulator franchise history. So um, a number of uh, reskins were made based on the Virgin Trains model. It was in the Virgin uh, first generation pack. No, no, first no, I said that wrong. It was in no, it was in the uh, first generation pack. Yeah, the Virgin first generation pack uh, had several trains in it. I don't know what they all are. I'll see if I can get you some more information on that if I uh, think about doing that. But um, the one train that, we, that people wanted to pack for was the Class 47 because other iterations of the Class 47 were not anywhere near as operationally good as the Virgin one. So people wanted the uh, Virgin one, and when that pack disappeared from the store, there was a huge, huge gap created by that. Uh, especially because Backdated Train Sim, for example, had a number of reskins all tied to that Virgin models, uh, Virgin first generation pack. And uh, even though the similar train came in the uh, Welsh Marshes route in 2020, which also disappeared after four months due to other licensing problems with the Riva, and eventually showed up later in the year as an unbranded version. So even with that, um, even the 47 in that version was not, um, it was similar operationally, but it didn't work with the reskins. The reskins had a couple of problems on them. What I'm hopeful for is that the reskins will all work with this version and therefore people will be able to put the reskins on this version of the train, not having to rely on the Virgin Trains model. Uh, as long as all the uh, reskins can be done similar, almost identically, identically, almost identically, or with small changes to them at the very least, to make them work better, um, then we could potentially see all the models make their way over and uh, we'll be able to use those uh, first generation reskins on the Huddersfield model instead. That will make this the equivalent of the Virgin Trains first generation pack in that regard. So, uh, and you get a free route too. Excuse me a second. So it turns out as I was finishing that sentence, I had um, one of my very occasional sneezing fits. And needless to say, I'm not going to air that for you. But it turned out it was convenient. I was right near that crossing. So uh, we got a chance to take a nice close look at that crossing as we went over it. And we're now going to continue our journey to Leeds. We are 38 miles or so away from Leeds at this time. I'm trying to remember if we passed Dayton by this point. Let's check the map here. That's not where I want to be. Uh, if we check over along the route. Uh, no, we are nowhere near Dayton. Dayton is right here. No, that's not, no I'm on the wrong side of the route. No, we're on, I'm on the completely wrong side of the route. We were leaving uh, Manchester, Victoria. No, I was thinking we were in the second half of the route for some reason. No, we left Manchester, Victoria. We're approaching Ashton under Lynn. So yeah, we are nowhere near Dayton. What was I thinking about? 
insert uh, the um, a certain tomato juice plunking sound to go with that. That's why I had the 30. I was on the uh, Miles Play Junction, we saw Park Station, all that. I was thinking I was at Huddersfield on starting up for some reason. I don't know why I thought that, but I just did. People can be dumb dumb once in a while, I'm no exception. There's Ashton Underling coming up on the HUD right now. You can see it fully visible now with this label. And there is a 60 actually uh, ordered after Ashton Underland. That's we're limited to 60 anyway, so it's really no change for us. We just keep right on going. I believe we're gonna get a 50 going into uh, Stally Bridge, however, so we will keep that in mind. And we're starting to gain a little bit of speed here. Actually, we're gaining a lot of speed for the uh, pace here. So we're going to keep it at 60. Even though we can go up to 60.9 and still be legal, even to 61, if we stay on the low end of the 61.0, uh, we don't want to um, trigger the, any situation for going over the speed limit, which could include some kind of prompt telling us, hey, you're going over the speed limit. So I'm going to keep the speed probably down around 57, 59 as much as I can. If I reach 60, I'm going to look at that as a situation where I need to lower my speed. So if I go into the 60 area, I'm going to be shutting the throttle off like you just saw me doing. And I'll be putting a minimal throttle application back on to try to maintain 57, 58, 59. Here is Ashton under Lynn. I'm going to pull it back to 350 again, and it uh, turns out I am gaining speed on that, so I am going to have to uh, do a little bit of coasting here and there on this journey, but right now I seem to be losing speed, which is what I want to see, so I'm happy about that. I did respond to that because you have a 35 speed limit coming up. If you noticed it before I said it, congratulations. I was right on the 50, but I forgot to consider the 35 on the junction, so we are going to have a bit of a drop here. I'm going to put one minimum reduction on here to start slowing down. Again, there's no time to consider, so we can slow down at whatever pace we want to. Our ETA is currently 19.30 and 18 seconds. I'm going to put a little more brake power on for a moment to get the speed down a little quicker. And return to a minimum reduction, which should be enough at this point. So I put the 350 on to try to maintain 35 without losing too much speed. But since that is currently the speed limit we're going into, I have to pull that back and turn the throttle off. I was gaining speed, even with 350 RPM. So now we have the um, 35 section that we are now in. I'm still gaining too much speed, so I'm going to move, no, go off. Yeah, that was gaining way too quickly for my liking for that speed limit. So. Um, we're now going to enter the 50, but we have to get the entire train past the sign before we can actually start going 50. Here is Staley Bridge. I'm going to put the throttle back to 350 RPM, see if we can... Uh, yep, that's going to work nicely. I'll go ahead and increase it now. We can now go back up to 50 miles per hour, and then I'll just uh, allow it to do a slow increase up to 60. I said I would look up more on the Virgin Trains first generation pack as well, by the way, and I did do a quick look, and I found an old page on DP Simulation Talk. Well, actually, it was DP Simulation. No, I found an old Steam news page talking about it. It turns out there was also a high-speed train, the uh, Fable 43, or also known as the 125. That also was part of that pack, and uh, I didn't even consider that. I actually do have that, so I didn't even consider that. Now... I'm going to uh, actually look up the DP simulation page on that as well because I'm trying to remember, um, trying to remember specifically what uh, else there was in that pack. I don't remember offhand anything else, but I thought there was a different train in each of the three scenarios. So I feel like there's another train in there. We're entering a 65, so that's now a 60 speed limit for us again. And uh, taking a closer look, uh, yeah, we have a 47, we have a 43, we get the MK2Es, and that's it. We don't have any other trains in that DLC, apparently. Just the 43 and the 47, that's it. 
Okay. Now I know. Again, I own the since I actually own the pack, I was lucky to find it on Humble, best 18 bucks I ever spent. But um, in that regard, but I uh, haven't actually played with that pack yet, so I couldn't tell you what was in that pack myself. So now we're on an uphill. I'm just going to go ahead and leave the throttle at 550 RPM and let the speed go up slowly. That way I don't have to uh, babysit it too much. If we had an actual timing, we would have to babysit this, but I'm actually okay doing it this way. Freight is a much more relaxed timetable, and in recent years, uh, official scenarios have taken the tact of just giving you the 1,000 points to start, penalizing you for movement errors. Uh, so that's a tact that I like better than trying to do, for example, what the Sherman Hill uh, Independence Local did, or even freight scenarios in Sherman Hill did, trying to get you to a certain spot at a certain time, and it's like, why? Why? It's a freight timetable. Like, trains speed up slowly. Why are we trying to time them? Like, it was kind of funny we had to be moving around the yard and make timetable spot stops in the yard. Why are we doing timetable stops in the yard? Give them the time if they're early have to sit for a few minutes while another train passes and then the line clears. You don't have to do anything else. Now, it turns out that scenario I'm talking about with the independent local is achievable. I did do it uh, at a full purpose score without any editing. So uh, that one is possible, but it is very, very tight. That's what I don't like about some of the early scenarios. They're just way too tight in the time, even if it is possible. That, I believe, was um, Mossley. No, yeah, it would have been Mossley Station, I believe. I didn't look at the uh, HUD, but since I do see the Stockport Road crossing indication whistleboard coming up, uh, that confirms to me that it was Mossley Station that we just passed. Hopefully we see the dirt path representing the Stockport Road Crossing in a future update. both tones of the two-tone horn there. This is where the crossing would have been. We're going to keep going. Losing a little too much speed on the current uphill, so I'm moving back to 500 RPM to try to maintain. I don't need to gain any. I'm in good shape right now for my speed. I just want to try to maintain. If I do gain in steadily, I'll deal with it. I do need a tad more if I want to maintain, it looks like. And now I am gaining. So I'm okay. This is a slow gain. I can tolerate this. on Greenfield platform. Actually, we're passing it right now. I'm hitting the, uh, a little bit of a higher speed limit. I didn't check that train for you. Sorry about that. So as we continue along, we're going to come upon the site of the old Moorgate station. So I'll go ahead and I'll pop outside the train. I don't know if there's any indication where the station used to be. I'm coming a little too quickly now. So let's uh, pull the throttle back. So the Moorgate station would have been somewhere in this stretch right here. I don't know exactly where. Uh, based on... No, that's just brush of some sort. Based on the signal, I'm assuming it was in this area right here that we're going through right now. That's my assumption. 
There was a uh, junction beyond this. The name of the junction was Greenfields Junction. And a track would have gone out to the left before we crossed this creek here. So the track would have gone left before that. What track is that? It goes to, it went to Dog Cross and beyond. It was the Delph, sorry, the, uh, yeah, the Delph Branch. I thought it was Delphi, but it's a Delph. We have a reduction to 60 up ahead, which basically means maintain speed for us. We have now passed the old Saddleworth area. So the Saddleworth Viaduct is in this uh, general area as well. Uh, actually, we're now beyond it because it's further back. It was on the right curve. We're now on the left curve. And before we enter the tunnel, we're going to go through Diggle Junction. That's the site of an old Diggle Junction station as well. So we're going to go back in the cab and get ready to enter this tunnel. I've gone ahead and moved my throttle back up as the uphill has gotten steeper again. So I'm going to start gaining towards about 58 miles per hour once again. Here's Diggle Junction. That means the Diggle, or not the, sorry, the Stand Edge Tunnel is coming up next. There's the 60 sign, which for us is a maintain. Here's the tunnel. Now we're going to continue through the Stand Edge Tunnel on pretty much flat ground. And there's another train behind us. We're not going to be able to check who that is now without the map, so I'll just stay away from there. Based upon my notes and the present time, I would assume that was either 1M72 or 7M18. I think it was 1M72 because I think we're going to see another train which will be uh, 7M18 in just a moment in the same tunnel. They left their spots three minutes apart, both at Huddersfield. So I think we're going to see 7M18 coming through next. Fully expect to see that train coming in the future here. If you want to know where these trains are going, by the way, uh, 1M72 is the Hull to Manchester Piccadilly service, whereas 7M18 is a uh, Fiddler's Ferry service. I don't know if it's supposed to be Fiddler's with two Ds or one D, but the train name spells it with one D. A lowering of speed limit coming up, so I'm going to take the throttle off for a second, just check the map very quickly and see, since we're in the dark anyway, I'm going to verify, that's a different train coming, 2M83 is coming, that actually was 7M18 that we passed. Got back in time to respond to the alert, so let's continue onwards. Just letting the speed drop gradually. So that 2M83 service is coming in our direction now. That particular service is a Wakefield Westgate to Manchester, Victoria. And for our, in our scenario, it left Murphy on platform three. That's where it began this scenario. So it was making a uh, pickup stop at there, I believe, when it started its uh, run. Or just continue this run from there as when the scenario started, I don't know. We're going to need a slight break out in case you get down to the 45, so we're going to do that. A little bit of a halo effect on 2M83 coming in the tunnel there. So we're down to 45. That sign up ahead should be a 60, because you are moving into a 70. Oh, we're hitting downhill. I'm going to go ahead and leave the throttle off for now because you are coming to uh, 
downhill that is going to really help us start gaining some speed. So I'm going to leave the uh, throttle off for a moment, just let the uh, train pick up its own speed. I will apply some throttle to get uh, up to 60, but I'm not going to be keeping the throttle on the entire time here. Because I think on this downhill we will get up to 60 even unassisted. So let's see what kind of game we have here and I'll play it from there. We're just hitting the downhill gradient right now and we're under the 60 mile per hour speed limit once again. As soon as we finish reach passing the sign. In fact, I've gotten low enough I am going to put a little bit of throttle on just to uh, coax it into action here. I think somewhere around 45 or 50 I will turn the throttle back off and let the train gain on its own because 1 in 104 will gain speed. You can actually see it going really quickly now so I think it makes sense for me in a moment. Once I'm fully past the signal I will turn the throttle off. There we go. So I'm going to let the train do its own speed gain at this point. I don't need to coax it anymore. It's been coaxed enough. You over coax it, it won't want to be coaxed anymore. So we did pass Mars the station that shortly after we left the tunnel. Slawin should be the next station we see as we drive along here. We'll be crossing the Slawit viaduct before we actually see Slawit itself. Remember in the itinerary, our, our only stop is at Leeds, so we're not going to be stopping at Huddersfield. We're going to have to obey, however, any speed limits imposed through the platform we go through at Huddersfield, which I believe uh, this service is going by uh, platform 8, which means a 20 mile per hour speed limit will be imposed on our freight service coming through that platform. And there is Slawit up ahead, so that means the Slawit Viaduct is coming up. downhill continues until we get closer to Huddersfield, so it does continue through Slawit. We're currently approaching 53 miles per hour. Now again, we could have juiced it up to about 50 or 55 on our own and then just uh, managed it from there. Uh, but then we would have had to hit the brakes a lot more. So since we don't have any kind of timing pressure, I decided just let the downhill do the work. And we are going to have to eventually hit the brakes at some point, but we can just take about 4 or 5 miles off and we're only going to have to do it the one time. After that, we can bring the train down to the 35 and eventually the 20 speed limit beyond it and the 25 in between. Continuing to increase our speed now 56 and a half miles per hour just now. You may have noticed the uh, tone of the light went down in the cab. This is a scenario that is going into nighttime. Notice the time is 1910. 
for the change in the light theme at that moment when 1910 crossed, maybe a few seconds. Uh, so it was at that point that the darkness uh, got a little darker. If you look on the side, you'll even notice it looks darker outside as well. Ooh. Yeah, so it looks darker out there as well. The daylight is fading. By the way, was I imagining it earlier? Or did we actually have a... Uh, when I was outside the cab, did we hear the alerter? I just realized that happened a little while ago. And we might have heard the alerter outside the cab. I'm trying to figure out if I was hearing things or if I'm remembering you correctly now. Anyway, the next thing we're going to see is a drop to 70 and eventually a drop to 60, which doesn't affect us. However, the drop to 35 beyond that will affect us. We're now up to 59 miles per hour. This might be a good time to start slowing down in a moment. I think I'll go until about a mile away from the 60 and then I'll start slowing and I'll see what a break does for the next two tenths of a mile. That'll tell me what we need to do coming up to the 35. Okay, I'm now didn't follow my own guidance there, but I will take it off now and see what happens for two tenths of a mile. It was at 0.85 at the moment. And now as it comes to 0.65, I can see I dropped five miles off, so it looks like I have a decent reduction at minimum reduction. I will drop it a little bit more for right now, and then I'll plan for that 35 as I get closer to it. So that will do for right now. Actually, forget the 35, the 25 is right next to it, so uh, that's what I'm planning for. I had a little more of a leg moment there. So we're still on a downhill as we go through Huddersfield, but it looks like it flattens out briefly at Huddersfield before it continues down. We'll take a look as we get closer to the station. For right now, putting a minimum brake application on, there's the alert. So we'll respond to that before we get emergency brake on. Which is a train's equivalent of getting dumped on. here at 40 for a little while because I came off a little too well, a little too early, so we're going to take some uh, continued movement here. Our ETA has dropped to 19.22.51, which is fine. We're taking this journey casually. In a freight train, we certainly have every reason to take it casually if we so choose. I don't know if the services at Leeds or anywhere else will get advanced priority depending on how far away you are from the signal. If they're the first to ask for it, they might get it. I have seen that in Sherman Hill, you might remember, and uh, boy, did that surprise me when I saw it. I might have responded a little too uh, late in the brakes here, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of a self-lap here. Back to a minimal reduction. I'm hoping I can get down to 25 in time. I will. I'm going to keep going for 20. The garbled sign beyond that is a 40, but it looks like there's two 20 signs meshed together there. So it's kind of uh, pop. It's a little bit possible to see that. I put a little follow back on to. Uh, Try to maintain the 20. I'm keeping a shunt setting on to see what it does. Probably not much. This is Huddersfield platform. You see another train next to me. We're now going to move into the 40 mile per hour segment after we clear this 20 that we just entered. The 20 is for the junction and only for the junction. But as always, if any part of our train is inside that 20 junction, we have to get the entire train out of it before and pass the next sign before we can speed up. So even though we've entered the 40 section, we cannot speed up yet. 
If our train was a mile long, we'd have to get the entire mile out of the uh, junction before we could go. And by then, we'd already be in the 70. Almost sped. That was close. Now we can speed up. Let's go. Now go back up to 60 miles per hour, which is our imposed limit. We're still on a little bit of a downhill, but I think I don't think it's downhill all the way here. It is slight because we're coming down from the, from the Pennines, but uh, it's not a constant gradual downhill like we did coming from coming through Slawit. Right now the gradient is one and 101, so we would gain speed with no throttle applied. That means I will turn the throttle back off. Now is a good time to do that, I think, as we approach Dayton. And no, it isn't, because the gradient just smoothed out to a 1 in 146. We're now losing speed. I noticed that after I turn it off, that it's decided to smooth out. I know it does fluctuate back and forth into at different times into those uh, different sets of speed of uh, gradients here. to my nose, 1M76 is going to technically enter the route soon. Of course, it's already in the route, but it's technically going to enter the route soon to make a stop at platform 16, at which point it will start heading in our direction. I'm now reaching 58 miles per hour. I do need to watch my speed now. It's worth knowing we don't actually get penalized for speeding because we're not actually breaking any uh, speed limit violations. But we will be um, partially rebuked if we disobey our boss. So we have to make sure we obey our boss here. That sign up there, I think, is a 60. And I think that one does clear by the time I reach it. So, um, I'm trying to check the layout to see what I can find here, if I have any memory of this. But most of the signs that verbally go like that are 60s. One is a 45, and then the Hunter's Field has a 20. I think the 40 coming out of Hunter's Field is also garbled. But most of these are 60s. I think the appropriate thing you do is slow down a little bit as you get towards an unknown speed limit. It does not seem to be clearing. Looks like it could be any numbers there. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of extra brake on, or a little brake on now just to slow down. Like this is where your root knowledge gets tested. I think it's a 60, but I can't see any indication of it. So I'm going to uh, get down to 40 just to be safe and see if the sign has a chance to clear as we approach it. We're now on a 1 in 1 3 gradient as we approach Murfield. The sign is not clearing. It remains garbled. 
It is a 60. I was right. So I'm going to go ahead and start speeding back up. Our ETA, by the way, is now 1933. I think it's taking the fact that we're in 85 limits and such to apply timings as if we were going at 85, but obviously we're not allowed to go beyond 60. Again, naturally we're not allowed to go beyond 60 anyway, so, and we don't have any timings anyway. Referring only to the ETA. So we're coming up on Murfield right now. I'm reducing the throttle back to a lower setting here as we get to 57. This is Murfield. Our ground is flattening out, so any throttle at this point will gain speed on this relatively flat ground. In fact, we might be on a slight downhill. I'm looking for a nick in the ground to confirm, but we might be on a slight downhill. Either that or an uphill, I don't know. It is an uphill, I see the nick at the end of the HUD right now. So we're on a slight uphill, I'm getting to turn off the throttle as we get, by the time we get to Raventhorpe. Now I mentioned earlier that a 1M76, the hull to manage a service should be entering our map momentarily. Uh, it should be arriving at Leeds in about the next minute or so. So I'll show you Leeds just to confirm that. In the meantime, we are approaching Ravenstar platform right now. And as I said, we're getting high enough now that I'm going to actually turn my throttle down to an off position for a moment and just coast for a moment. Here's Ravenstar. A quick look at Leeds, you can see the uh, 1M76 service is making it stop at Leeds platform 16 west right now. So we're going to go ahead and look at our train cab once again. We are now about uh, 9, well actually just under 10 miles from our destination, which today is Leeds platform 11. So we're going to go a few tracks over from our normal Huddersfield Pass at 15 and 16. We're going to go to 11. I'm losing speed now. We just hit an uphill again, so I'm going to apply some power. I'm going to put a 550 RPM on and see how that handles a 1 in 143 gradient uphill. It's handling it very nicely. We're now going to follow the Dewsbury up main. Batley Station is ahead in the distance. And now we're getting a lot of speed. The gradient has smoothed out. So I'm going to go ahead and move the train down to a low RPM setting again. This uh, throttle will start to uh, be insufficient on the next uphill stretch we're getting as we approach Batley. As I said, the throttle is now insufficient for maintaining speed. So I'm applying the 525 RPM throttle setting right now. 
Why the 25? Because that's what I landed on. the signal that protects Valley Station. And this is Batley. Hard to see much in these expeditions, I'm sure. But it's there. The Morley Tunnel awaits up ahead. You don't see it yet, but it is up there. Another class 142 will be entering the route number 2M82, head code. Heading from Manchester, Victoria from Selby. That's going to be making a stop somewhere in the Leeds area, probably at 1931, thereabouts. So if I pop up to Leeds at that time, we should see that service coming through as well in the Leeds platforms. Well, now that I think about it... Oh yeah, that's the one I'm going to see. There is one more on my list, but I don't think it goes anywhere. So we are in the Morley Tunnel now. I didn't call it as we entered, but we are definitely in the tunnel. That, I think that's the so-called end of tunnel up ahead. Uh, it got covered by more loading tunnel that had not been loaded yet. We do have 55. That does mark the end of the tunnel. So we are going to be exiting the tunnel at that 55 marker. My problem is that we apply to a 400 RPM setting. Our arrival time at Leeds is now uh, 19, roughly about 1935, because we're close enough to just round up, I think. Again, I'm only three miles out of the speed limit. We're losing time. So uh, that tells you that uh, coming up with a timing for a reduced speed limit is a really, really hard task. Uh, so it uh, could be a little, a little less fun if there was a timing pick that turned out to not be a good one for certain play styles. So I like the fact it's a 1,000 point and down scenario. Let's take the uh, throttle off and get down to... Is that a... I think that's a 55, 65, 75 situation, but we need to get down to 55 anyway. Just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and get down to 45, just to be safe. But I think that is a 65, because I've been through this area enough, I remember that being a 65. And we emerge from the darkness, and we are now going through Morley Station itself. No speed change, so my memory serves it is a 65. Or a 60, not a 65, but it's still a 60 for us, so it doesn't matter. take another look from the top of the train at the White Rose Business Center, which is going to be uh, possibly visible, possibly not visible on the uh, right here. So this hill covers the uh, entire business center from our view right now. As we come around the corner, some of it will become visible uh, beyond these hills. 
Like, we'll have us hop over the hills right now, but we're gonna stay on the train itself. So there it is over there, the business center. And I'm just gonna go ahead and detach now that we can see it. There it is over here, how it looks in the darkness. That's how it looks in the dark. Now what I understand is that it is not true to what it actually looks like in person and that would have involved a lot of field trips and a lot of uh, figuring things out and remodeling certain buildings. So in some cases they might have just put buildings they already had in there that, rep that, have, that are close enough to what the business center looks like even if the colors might not be exactly the same as long as there's a decent layout that somewhat matches it based on what is already in the game they were able to do that and save some uh, scripting time or some modeling time so i think they were trying to um do things in an acceptable manner not in a perfect manner and most people are not from that area wouldn't even know what it looks like so as far as people like myself are concerned if there's a business center there and you put a business center down there it could be off by a few by a little bit and I wouldn't care because I don't know what it looks like I probably never will be inside the buildings either so it won't matter so notice I'm not trying to increase my speed right now because I see there's a 30 mile per hour section and a 25 following it up ahead so I'm not doing anything with my speed right now in fact I'm gonna go ahead and just turn it off and let it coast I will need to hit the brakes in the moment because we are in a, on a 1 in 104. In fact, maybe I'll start doing that now just to prepare for the um, 30 up ahead. So I'll speed, take the speed down a little bit. The gradient will smooth out a little bit more by the time we reach the 30. It is still going to be downhill. We are going to get some temporary speed increases, uh, but it will start to smooth out mostly by the time we reach the 30, with the exception of a couple track connecting points I remember from a previous scenario. Now we're getting very low for the distance we are from the sign, so I've gone ahead and eased off the brakes. We are getting the warning, however. The warning does tell us, hey, you're going to want to make sure you go the uh, speed limit here, buddy. Make sure you go the speed limit if you want to keep your score, buddy. Yeah, keep your score. I'm gonna go ahead and pop down and save right here because I'm gonna use this for achievement purposes. So I'm, you're, I'm not gonna hide the fact you've seen me put a save in there. I'm not planning to come back to that save in this uh, recording. I'm gonna meet the speed limits myself. We're not gonna have any issues. So we're not gonna come back to that save. That's just for achievement purposes. Because I know already that the achievements are not working. The other six didn't get given to me, and I'm not going to get the all scenarios one with this officially. I mean, I already got the all scenarios some other way. We're not going to talk about that because it shouldn't have happened. But um, we're going to ignore that detail for right now. So we're going to hit another downhill gradient coming up here. This is where I'm concerned that I could slightly break the speed limit, if I were to have any concern at all. So the gradient is changing now. I'm going to put a little bit of a break on just to make sure we don't speed. We're now on a 1 in 83 gradient. This is the one that could ruin an, entire, an hour of work. Just in a matter of a few seconds, you could ruin an hour of work in this 25 segment when you hit that 1 in 83. This is how it can happen. Now you can see there's a 10 in the platform we're going into. So that's a very interesting uh, speed difference. Notice I put the brakes on because we crossed 25 again, so I didn't want to speed through it. The gradient is now a 1 in 115. 
but the back of our train is still on the 183, so we're still going to have a downhill section. In fact, we're getting steeper again now. We're now on a 1 in 108 on the engine. We're now moving over to line D, it looks like. We're going to make our way into platform 11. I think that's the train that was waiting for us. That might have been the train coming from... Uh, let me check that in a moment. Check that very quickly. That is uh, the train 2M82. For some reason, it was made to wait for us. We were not made to wait for it. So apparently I did this scenario a bit slowly. Well, the passengers and their troopers, they've been sitting there for five minutes waiting for us. I think that's bad. We're going to have another train that leads platform 10, and it uh, goes into service at 19.33 and 30 seconds, so three minutes ago, it's also waiting for us at the next platform to our left. We'll get a shot of it in our screenshot because I don't think, at the end of the stereo, because I don't think it's going to go anywhere. There it is right there. You can see it right there. In fact, if I pull up the uh, train, you can see the label. Uh, for the train next to us. It is 2E71, Manchester, Victoria to Leeds. Wait a second. Manchester, Victoria to Leeds? What? We're at Leeds. That, that train technically must have arrived. I guess that train technically arrived ahead of us. I had my information wrong. Well, the funny thing is, it's actually at the platform. We're not actually following it on the way. It's actually at the platform, so that's interesting. Here is a yellow signal as we go through platform 11 west. We're going to stop at 11 east. So do not stop at this platform. You will not complete the objective at this platform. The final signal that we may pass. There you go. We can stop anywhere at 11E. I'm going to see if we can get the entire train through the uh, 10 junction first. We are slowing down, so we're not getting speed. That makes things easier. Looks like there's stuff on the track there, doesn't it? Almost looks like it. I think the rain is just uh, playing with my view there. I think I'd take a few more cars with us. It would have fit. put a slight speed increase on and I'm going to slow down uh, momentarily to stop before the, seven, the uh, signal. In fact, the signal is a little beyond the platform. I want to stop by the end of the platform, not the signal. Since we're now getting the warning, I'll go ahead and I'll just turn the train off at this point. That's the end of the stereo. Let's look at the train. Well, one more nice view of the Class 47 in the uh, lead station, looking at the uh, buildings on the other side here. Uh, I didn't get a shot of the uh, station motel that's over there. It's uh, joining platform eight. Um, but I think we saw it in a previous scenario. It's a little further over than where we are. Excellent work, driver. We've gotten the fuel into Leeds in reasonable time to not lose the path onwards to Humber Oil Refinery for your relief, driver. Get yourself into the staff room where you can put your feet up and grab basically a coffee. Your turn for today is finished. Excellent. Geez, an hour long work day. That's um, a very simple work day. When, where can I get a job like that? Anyway, that's the end of the scenario. Let's look at the uh, score, which basically there should be nothing on the scoring screen. We had no penalties, so let's take a look at it.
Yar, that's what we want to see. Uh, so since there's nothing really to discuss on this screen, let's go to the menu and just take a look at the menu screen for a moment, shall we? So there it is, all seven scenarios done. We're going to move on to uh, another route for now because I can't do anything with the achievements right now. But once the achievements do show up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to clear all those achievements and get them all done. I have saves for every single scenario. If I go down the list, you'll see that I have the option to resume every scenario. So I have a save point set up to quickly get those achievements. What I'll probably do is I will um, find some custom scenarios, which right now they can't go in the workshop either. Huddersfield scenarios cannot go in the workshop right now. But if I can find some workshop scenarios in the future once that works, uh, I may make a point of driving a couple of those scenarios to help towards the uh, Miles achievement. I'll see if I can put those in. I'm hoping in about a month from now when I'm looking through for all the Christmas stuff I want to do, I might do another route, but after that I might do the Huddersfield stuff temporarily before we go back to the Christmas stuff in that case. So um, I am looking at, uh, at this point, I have a month of content ready to go. I think I mentioned that last time. And with that month of content, that means that from, um, from the time that I'm posting this, which I believe um, is the 22nd, I think the date that you're gonna see this, uh, a month from then is gonna be the 19th of November. So I have another month to Christmas. That means I have about three weeks, four weeks maximum before I have to get my Christmas scenarios aired, whatever Christmas stuff I decide to do. Uh, I'm probably gonna also minimize my timetable or I might even do a, a special bunch of quickie type stuff uh, in the week following Christmas and do some extra stuff. I might even do a special, some other kind of special thing. I haven't decided yet. I might do a North American Loco special or something like that on a single route. Don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but uh, I have to find something I'm comfortable with because I'm going to have to eventually come back and introduce all the trains officially that I drive anyway. Uh, we'll worry about that at a later time. For right now, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, save for now. Stay tuned uh, for South London Network to continue the uh, stuff I started uh, and I last posted two weeks ago on Saturday two weeks ago. You may have noticed uh, when I posted that video, I said that that service would, that, that service, that series of scenarios would resume on uh, October 25th. So yeah, Saturday is 22nd. That's the day you're seeing this. Um, so I said it would resume on October 25th. I'm keeping that uh, that uh, word. I'm going to remove that note once I once that scenario comes up. But it is going to be showing on October 25th. So you are going to see scenario number six on Tuesday. Stay tuned for that on South London Network. You're going to see scenario seven, I think, the next day. Uh, and again, I had these recorded long before this route was uh, announced. Uh, not long, but maybe a couple days before it was announced so uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about that route I had six and seven already recorded before I even did that I even looked started looking at the 455 around the time that they made the announcement so uh, obviously once I got my hands on the uh, full route I was able to record them but I had all that stuff ready to go in the meantime so I could just follow it up while I was away from the house for a little while so yeah you're gonna get to see all the stuff I have in the backlog right now I mentioned also the Mitten Wald Bond yesterday, so you're going to see the 442 scenarios on there. In the meantime, I'll have a wonderful day, evening, night, whatever it is for your part of the world. I'll see you next time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. Uh, for sure, next time, it is going to be South London Network in a Class 375. See you for that. I'm Cyclone. Bye-bye.